Another important mission being developed at the Lockheed Martin High Bay is called the Gravity Recovery and Interior Laboratory, or GRAIL. This mission will fly twin spacecraft in tandem around the moon to precisely measure and map variations in the moon's gravitational field. Although we already have good information about the moon, there is a need to determine the structure of the lunar interior from crust to core and to advance the understanding of the thermal evolution of the moon. Here is GRAIL's principal investigator, Dr. Maria Zuber, to tell us more. Well, the moon is our nearest neighbor in the solar system. And the way that I like to think about it is to think of uh, the moon like you would think of uh, a friend or a neighbor. But when you think about the people who mean the most to you, it's not what they're like on the outside, it's what's in the inside of them that makes them special. And we've sent a lot of missions, we've landed people on the moon, we've orbited spacecraft around the moon, but the part of lunar understanding that we don't yet have is what's inside the moon. So to really understand the moon and understand what makes it special, we need to study what's inside. GRAIL has a secondary mission too, which is to help us reduce risk to future lunar robotic or human science and exploration missions to the moon by providing a high resolution global gravity field that will eliminate gravity uncertainties for precision lunar navigation and landings. Of course, all of the knowledge acquired about the moon from GRAIL will also be used to understand the broader evolutionary histories of the rocky planets in the inner solar system, including Earth, Venus, Mars, and Mercury. So our little moon is quite important for us to understand the broader solar system. Another of the important missions NASA is planning is the Mars Science Laboratory, or MSL. This golf cart-sized rover will be over five times as heavy as NASA's previous Mars exploration rovers, while also carrying over 10 times the weight of scientific instruments. Its primary mission is to help us determine if life ever arose on Mars, to characterize its climate and geology, and to prepare for human exploration. Named Curiosity, this rover is scheduled to work for at least one Martian year, or about 686 Earth days, and has been designed to explore a much greater range than any previous Mars rover. Here is aerospace engineer Jessica Collinson to tell us a little more about the MSL. We are tasked with getting a vehicle that can, in this case, drive around Mars and meet all of those different objectives. Since we aren't sending people to Mars right now, we need to design our spacecraft to represent what a human would do on Mars. So we need to think about visuals. How are we going to decide where we're going to go? We need to be mobile. We need to have a, a mobility system to be able to drive around. So we have these cameras that we're able to span out across the horizon, pick our next target. We have an autonomous navigation system which allows us to drive with no instructions throughout the day. We just pick that target, drive off to that area. You need to figure out how to communicate back to Earth, so we have a, an antenna. And then you need to think about, well, what's the science that you're doing? And so, you know, just like a geologist in their, you know, tool belt has all these different types of instruments, we pack them on our robotic arm on our rover. Our robotic arm for the rover has four elements on it. We have a, the rock abrasion tool that it actually goes up and scrapes off the dirt that has been collecting or the dust that has been collecting on these um, rocks. We have a microscopic imager that will allow us to zoom in closely and take a look at what the actual structure of what these elements look like. And then we have two science instruments which help us determine what actually we're looking at and what the mineral makeup is. It's our own little personal field geologist um, out roving around Mars telling us all about what the Martian soil looks like. We'll be right back. You're watching NASA 360. Other than Earth, the most studied planet in our solar system is Mars. Although we know quite a bit about Mars, there are still some lingering mysteries, like why is its atmosphere so thin? At one time, Mars had a dense atmosphere that supported the presence of liquid water on the surface. But due to dramatic climate change, most of its atmosphere was lost. 
To help unravel this mystery, a new mission called MAVEN is headed to Mars. MAVEN is designed to make definitive scientific measurements of present-day atmospheric laws that will offer clues about the planet's history. Johnny spoke to MAVEN's principal investigator, Dr. Bruce Joukowsky, at the University of Colorado to find out more. We've been doing Mars missions for over 40 years. Uh, this one in back of me is one that was in the late 1960s, and we're really excited to be continuing that with the MAVEN mission, which launches in 2013. MAVEN stands for the Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution Mission. It's an orbiting spacecraft that is designed to understand the history of the Mars atmosphere. Why is that an interesting question? The spacecraft we've sent over the last 40 years have given us a lot of information about Mars. They've provided convincing evidence that the climate on early Mars was very different from what it is today. Uh, the atmosphere was much thicker, temperatures were much warmer, there was liquid water. So where did all the CO2 go? Where did all the water go? One of the possibilities is they all went down into the subsurface, but we're exploring the possibility that all that gas, all that water was lost to space. To get to space from the atmosphere, it has to go through the upper atmosphere. So we're looking at, we're going to be looking at the upper atmosphere of Mars, the processes that control the ability of gases to go through it and how it's lost to space. The goal of the mission then is to understand how much gas has been lost to space through time. The questions that MAVEN is going to address really get at issues like planetary habitability. How is Mars able to support life? To what extent was it able to support microbes early in history and not today? And it really gets at this question of, does Mars have life? If it does, how is it supported? Uh, it's something that excites people. It's really the driver, in many ways, of why we're exploring space, exploring the planets and out uh, beyond our own solar system to understand something about the history of life. Understanding the Martian atmosphere, will that help us better understand Earth's atmosphere? It will, uh, but that's not the reason we're doing it. There, there's a couple of issues in here. By understanding the Mars atmosphere, we understand many of the same processes that operate at the Earth, but in a different environment. So we're looking at different boundary conditions. It allows us to better understand the processes. But the most important issue is that Mars today doesn't have a magnetic field. And that means that the solar wind hits the atmosphere and can strip it away directly. It's easier to lose the, the Martian atmosphere. The, the Earth has a magnetic field, and that causes the solar wind to stand off, and it protects the Earth's atmosphere. If we want to understand the Earth's atmosphere, we really do it by studying the Earth's atmosphere. I think the reason we're, we're studying the Mars atmosphere is not just to bring it back to Earth, but it's really to understand the Mars atmosphere, to understand the nature of planets elsewhere in our solar system. What's the range of different types of planets that might be able to support life? So by, by studying Mars and the other planets in our solar system and now the other planets outside our solar system, we really get a handle at these broad questions of the nature of planets, the nature of, of life and how it interacts with planets, and the distribution of life uh, within our universe. So we're, we're really excited about this mission. We think it addresses really important science questions about Mars that have broader applicability, and we think we've put together a first-rate mission that can move forward and, and get us the answers to these questions. It's fantastic. Bruce, thank you so much for your time, and we hope to see you again. Thank you. I Definitely. appreciate the Any, opportunity. Our pleasure. So today, we have learned just a little bit about some of the missions funded by the Planetary Science Division at NASA, but trust me on this one, it's just the tip of the iceberg. In the coming years, new discoveries and adventures will unveil themselves to us. And thanks to NASA, we'll have a front row seat. For Johnny Alonzo, I'm Jennifer Pulley. Catch you next time on NASA 360. Number one. Ah, sorry. And I'm Johnny Alonzo, and today on NASA 360, we're going to take a look at why and how we're doing it in, in today's modern age. Modern age, modern age, modern age. Almost got it. And if so, where will we go? Yeah, hey, get! Yeah. Go! Go! <laughs> Trying to get my paper.
But even with the wealth of information we've learned from our numerous space missions, there's still major... Nah, there's one major question. 